Hey everyone, in this video, we're diving into an interesting study that compared short and long courses of antibiotics in dogs with suspected bacterial pneumonia. Many of us have been taught that dogs with pneumonia need four to six weeks of antibiotics. But what if they don't? This study challenges that idea and the results might surprise you. Here's what we'll cover. Do dogs with pneumonia really need four weeks of antibiotics or can two weeks be enough? Should we still rely on x-rays to decide when to stop treatment? And what does this all mean for our patients and their owners? Let's start with the basics. Bacterial pneumonia in dogs usually develops in one of the two ways. Aspiration pneumonia, which occurs after vomiting or regurgitation. However, it's important to note that not every aspiration event leads to bacterial pneumonia. Some cases may result in sterile pneumonitis instead. And so-called community-acquired pneumonia which is caused by exposure to infectious agents, often in environments like boarding facilities or dog parks. Traditionally, we've used long antibiotic courses, often four to six weeks, even though there's no strong evidence to support this practice. And that's a big deal. Overusing antibiotics can lead to numerous problems, such as increased antimicrobial resistance, disruption of the gut microbiome, higher treatment costs, and adverse reactions that can be mild, such as a GI upset, or more severe, such as organ injuries and abnormal immune reactions. In 2017, the International Society of Companion Animal Infectious Disease published guidelines on treating canine pneumonia. While they provided recommendations for antibiotic selection, they did not establish a clear guideline on treatment duration because there wasn't enough data. That's where this new study comes in. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania wanted to know, is four weeks of antibiotics really necessary? Or can we stop at two weeks? To find out, they took 30 dogs with uncomplicated suspected bacterial pneumonia and split them into two groups. The four-week group, which received antibiotics for the full four weeks, and the two-week group, which stopped antibiotics after two weeks and received a placebo instead for the following two weeks. The uncomplicated pneumonia was defined as pneumonia occurring in dogs that were otherwise healthy with no pre-existing lung disease. Aspiration pneumonia was diagnosed when respiratory signs followed an episode of vomiting. And community-acquired pneumonia was suspected in dogs with no history of vomiting, but with potential exposure to infectious agents, such as at boarding facilities or dog parks. The study was blinded, meaning neither the veterinarians nor the owners knew which dogs were in which group. Dogs were monitored with owner-reported clinical signs, including coughing, lethargy, and breathing changes, as well as physical exams by study investigators and three-view thoracic x-rays reviewed by board-certified radiologists. So, what did they find? By the first follow-up visit, which occurred around day 12 to 14, 18 out of 30 dogs, or 60%, had complete resolution on x-rays. The remaining 12 dogs, or 40%, showed improvement, no worsening. Only one dog in each group was noted to be coughing on physical examination. By the final follow-up, at around one month, 25 out of 30 dogs, or 83%, had fully resolved pneumonia on x-rays. This included 12 of 15 dogs, or 80%, in the four-week group, 
in 13 of 15 dogs, or 87%, in the two-week group. The remaining five dogs, or 17%, had either stable or continued improvement in radiographic lesions. Not a single dog relapsed or worsened in either group. Before we jump to the conclusion and takeaways, it is important to address an elephant in the room. This study was underpowered. And that's really important to understand before we apply these findings to clinical practice. The researchers initially planned to enroll 70 dogs with 35 in each group, which would have provided 80% power to detect a 30% difference in relapse rates between the two groups. But they only enrolled 30 dogs with 15 in each group, less than half of their target sample size. They had to stop the study due to recruitment difficulties, which is very understandable. So why does this matter? A study that is underpowered means that if there was a real difference, such as less than 50% in relapse rates based on the post hoc power analysis between the two groups, this study may not have been able to detect it. In other words, the lack of relapse in the two week group could be a true or false negative finding, meaning this study can't definitively prove that shorter treatment is just as effective and it only shows that in this small sample, no difference was detected. A larger study might show a higher relapse rate in the two-week group, or it might confirm that shorter treatment really is enough. Right now, we just don't know for sure. That said, both human and veterinary research provide multiple signals suggesting that shorter antibiotic courses can be just as effective as longer ones. Therefore, there is a strong possibility that this study's findings represent a true negative result, meaning shorter antibiotic courses may indeed be just as effective. So what's the bottom line here? First, four weeks of antibiotics may be unnecessary for dogs with uncomplicated pneumonia. Second, if the dog is clinically improving, a two-week course or maybe even shorter courses of antibiotics might be just as effective. X-rays aren't always needed to decide when to stop antibiotics. Clinical science may be a better guide. And that last point is huge. In human medicine, we've already moved away from using X-rays to determine treatment duration because clinical improvement happens before full radiographic resolution. This study suggests the same may be true for dogs. But always keep in mind, this study was underpowered. So while we can be cautiously optimistic, we should interpret these results with care and wait for larger studies to confirm them. Until larger, well-powered studies confirm these findings, this is an area where clinical judgment is key. All right. I hope you found this video helpful. Before you go, I need your help choosing the next research paper we'll cover. Drop a comment below to vote for one of the papers displayed on the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.